Hey and welcome to another tutorial. Today I will show you how to create this cool looking heart emoji from iPhone in Microsoft PowerPoint. The left one is an image, the middle one is the heart created in PowerPoint using the built-in shape and the right one is the heart created in PowerPoint using the custom shape. So let's get started. I will start with a blank presentation where I already have this image pasted in. And if you have ever used the shapes in Word in PowerPoint, you know that there is a heart symbol in here. So if I select insert shapes, there is a heart symbol, which is of course named heart. So I can try to draw it. I will draw it in the very same size as the emoji from iPhone. And right away, right away you can tell that uh, you know it's a little bit different looking. But what I will do is I will not actually modify this shape yet, even when it's a little bit bolder on the bottom and you know the gap here is a little bit bigger that doesn't matter right now and the reason for this is if we keep the shape as is without any changes we can use a custom gradient fill which is only available for built-in shapes so i will right click and select format shape and i can change the fill to gradient fill and it seems like i already have this predefined but if i start with the default gradient i can change the type to be a path which will follow the path from the outer to the like to the center which is great because I can kind of simulate this uh, heart, which is seems to have like the outline in the you know around the edges, and I will use the gradient for this. So I will select the first gradient stop and use the eye wrapper tool to sample this red color from the middle. Then I will select the second gradient stop and again use the eye wrapper tool to sample one of those darker red colors. I will get rid of those two gradient stops, move this one to the right and the left one to the right as well, like here just so there is a little bit of darkening around the edges, just like on the left image. I will get rid of the line to set the line to no line. And I still need a little bit of darkening from the bottom. And for this one, I believe I can use the inner shadow effect. I will open the effects from this uh, drop down menu just so I can see it on the video. And in the shadow properties or shadow presets, I will select this inner bottom preset, inside bottom preset. I will open it from here and keep the black color for now so just so I can see what's going on. I will increase the distance a little bit like this and increase the blurriness, maybe decrease the distance, maybe like this. Okay, this seems about right. Then I will open the color and use the eye wrapper tool to sample one of those darker reds. And you can see it kind of looks similar. The only missing piece or only missing part is the highlight over the top of the shape. I will copy paste this shape one more time and make it a little bit smaller, maybe like this. I will get rid of the shadow, so I will set the shadow to no shadow, and I want this highlight going from like white to uh, semi-transparent white. So I will change the type of the gradient to linear, going from top, which I believe is 90 degrees, I hope, and the first gradient top should be white, the second should be white as well, but that one will have the transparency set to 100%. And I will probably move this more to the left, just so it's only around the top. You can see that when we've resized the shape, it kind of it's not like the offset path, it's just resizing, so it's not kind of matching, it's not uh, it ha doesn't have the equal distance from all the edges. So we have to right click and select edit points and probably move this point, or maybe if I move the shape like this, I will select edit points and maybe make it you know like a little bit this gap a little bit wider, maybe like this. That should work. And you can see that the shape is only done from two points which kind of makes things a little bit harder to adjust. But hopefully we can get some shape out, out of this one. So maybe I will do it like this. Okay, I believe that should work. Maybe I will resize it a little bit from the bottom. You know, I'm, I'm still having a little bit tighter um, edge in here, so I, I may still move this point a little bit down like this. Again, with just two points, making any adjustments to kind of uh, match the shape is a little bit, little bit harder. But I'm pretty satisfied with this shape, even when it does look a little bit different. I will adjust the gradient just so maybe I will move this more to the left, or maybe I will add one more gradient stuff with maybe like, I don't know, 70, 60 transparency. And may maybe it's uh, due to the compression or very small size of the original picture, but it seems like that there is a little bit of like a glow effect. So maybe I will duplicate this uh, shape one more time. And what I will do is I will blur this. So I will open the effects and in the soft edges, I will insert the size, maybe like, I don't know, like five points or so. Since it's blurring to the both outside and inside, the shape becomes a little bit smaller. So I may still resize the shape to a little bit bigger size, maybe like this. Okay, this, that seems fine. 
So that's the that's how you create a shape, a hard shape using the default built-in shape in Microsoft PowerPoint. Let's see if we can uh, draw the very same looking shape as is inside iPhone. So the shape will be, you know, a little bit less rounded. You can see the difference. So we will probably start using the ellipse tool. So I will insert a new shape building the ellipse. And this time it will all uh, actually be ellipse, not the circle. I will draw it like this. Increase the transparency for the fill a little bit and I will rotate, not move the image, but rotate the shape in a way that it kind of fits one of those sides, top parts. You can see I, st I have to kind of resize it to be a bigger size. It's basically a trial and error, but I think I'm getting to the right shape. Okay. This one seems about right. I will duplicate it by holding the control and shift key on my keyboard and moving it to the left side just so it's moved in the straight line. Then I will open the format and select rotate and flip horizontal and move it to the right side to match the, you know, the background image. I will select both shapes, copy paste those, move it to the same spot because I believe I will, I will, I may use it in the future. So I will right now I will select the selection pane and just hide those two shapes for now. I don't need those right away. I will select those two shapes, select Format, Merge Shapes Union, which will merge those shapes together. Now I will right click and select Edit Points. And I have uh, quite a lot of points. I need one of those points in the middle and move it down here. I don't need those points actually, so I will uh, press the Control key on my keyboard and just click on those points to get rid of those, like this. And you can see I'm, I'm getting a very similar result as the background image. The only difference is that this point should have the handles a little bit different way. If I start changing it, you will see that I can match the shape very precisely. If I move it like this on the, in the straight line, matching the curve, so it's being curved up here, but the rest of the stuff, I, I believe I'm pretty satisfied with the result given the time I've spent on this shape. So that's that would be like the base shape. We have those two other ellipses. I can sh quickly show them which we will be using for the highlight. And the reason for this is we can actually, you know, resize the ellipse holding the control and shift key and kind of match exactly the highlight size or shape. I can still probably merge those together. So I'll select Merge Shapes Union. I probably need a little bit of you know, volume in here in the middle. So I'll select Edit Points, move out of those points, you know, to the bottom. We get rid of this one. Maybe I can get rid of those two as well. I don't need to be precise on the bottom because there will be no highlight down here. So I don't need to take care about, about the size or shape of, of the, you know, of the entire highlight shape. So what I will do is I'll hide the, hide the selection pane, select both shapes and move those, not those two, but the outline and this one and move those to the right side. And I will probably show the selection pane because I need to select one of my older creations, which is this heart, the, uh, the bottom part. I will select the format uh, painter and I click on this background shape, but you can see we cannot use the path fill. It kind of doesn't work. So I will most likely use just a, just a linear going from top and just it's not actually going from top because you can see based on the selection handles a little bit, it's literally rotated. So I will just keep rotating it until I will see the gradient on the bottom. Okay, maybe like this. And we have this inner shadow effect, but again, it's going from the right side. So I have to rotate it to be you know, change the angle to be going from the bottom as well, like this 160 it is. Okay, then I can show the highlight. And again, I will use one of those highlights. So it's probably this hard six with the gradient going from white to white. I will use the format painter and click on this one to get the very same gradient. But again, since we have the shape being rotated or at least the selection handlers being rotated, I have to adjust the angle of the gradient. And I probably need to adjust the positions of those uh, gradient stops as well. Okay, 160 is like this. Then I will copy paste this shape one more time. And of course, set the blurriness a little bit so soft edges to maybe like four or five points, making maybe make it 
just a tiny bit little bigger move it to the spot when it looks like that you know the highlight is glowing on top and i think we are done so that's how you create the heart symbol from iphone the emoji inside microsoft powerpoint using either the default heart shape or using the custom shape which kind of matches the shape of the original iphone icon a little bit more and that's it thanks for watching